Hello, parents and guardians. Welcome to the collaboration with Parent Academy and data and assessment team to provide the intermediate Excel for parents and guardians. So we provided the uh, first one, the foundations, and I hope you enjoyed that. And so I'm ex super excited to do part two with you, the intermediate course. So in our first course, um, I did I showed you a sheet pause to allow you to kind of like mirror that sheet. We're going to be doing a little bit differently this time. We're going to I'm going to show you a sheet where it has a lot of information on it. And so you can try to maybe copy a portion of it, but I don't expect for you to copy the exact same sheet, but I will allow pause time for you to pause and then maybe practice it on your end as well. All right, so my name is Ronaldo Crespo and I will be providing this intermediate training and I'm super excited to get started. So let's get started. I'm going to bring up the sheet and this is our sheet we're going to be working with today. Yes, again, more of the B word, the budget. So on this particular workbook, we only have one worksheet expenses and this is a fake list of expenses for last year 2020. So we have four columns. We have our date of where we spent what, um, at each location, the actual location where we spent the money at. We even categorize what was spent at each location and then how much we spent. Now, I will say um, in creating this little worksheet, I had fun and these are totally random dollar amounts because some of these probably don't really make sense when you look at it. Um, so I just keep that in mind that these are just randomly generated dollar amounts. All right, so let's get started with some of the things we can do with this worksheet. So before we talk about the actual data, let's talk about look the looks of it and how we can clean it up and make it look a little better and to our liking. So um, on this worksheet, notice that we have our headers and they are shaded in. So a lot of times we recommend doing your headers with bold. So you can always do any of those changes up here. Notice we're on the home option and we can, that bold options right here. So if I click the bold, boom, we have it bolded. Now say I don't like the gray coloring in the background, we can change that with this paint can here. So notice I've highlighted all the things that I want to do that to. Go to the option and then we can choose any of our colors. We can also really click here and um, almost like choose from a palette of colors, but I'll, I'll just choose some of these um, default ones listed here. So I'm going to choose, let's do this one. That looks nice. All right. And another thing is a lot of times when you're working with a bunch of lists and rows and columns, sometimes you want it easy to distinguish between each row and column with what we call grid lines or what Excel calls grid lines. And so that is this option here. OK, now if I wanted to do the entire sheet, um, if before I show you a cool little shortcut, the only way to highlight the entire data would be to click, hold and drag or our team likes to call that Chad click hold and drag Chad. See, see what I did there? And so we can chat it all the way down to the bottom, but depending on how big our list is, that takes a long time. So what I'm going to show you is some different shortcuts to get quickly to the bottom, to the top or to highlight everything. So if I wanted to just highlight an entire row, I would first put my cursor in A1 and then on my keyboard, I would hold down the shift button, hold down control, and then press the right arrow key one time. Boom, and look at that. Now it's all highlighted and then I can let go. And if I wanted to, I could do some options there. Now that is highlighted, I can then, sorry, let me do that one more time. Shift, hold, or sorry, shift, control, right arrow. And then if I wanna do the same thing and highlight everything below me, I would do shift, hold, and then the down arrow key one time. And just like that, it's highlighted the entire data set. So now we can do some modifications to only the data set that we've chosen. And so if I wanted to add grid lines, then I can go to this top portion here and choose the little grid line drop down, and then I can do different options. But if I want all borders, that is this portion right here, this selection here, and now they all have borders. Look how clean that looks. Amazing, right? And so now our sheet looks a little bit better and organized to do next steps. Some other options you can do that are up here, excuse me, or you can increase the font. You can change the font type. You can also change the font size, and you can also increase the size of the um, size of the fonts here as well. If you just want to go up, up or down, 
or actually choose a different number. You can also center it or align it to the right or left with these buttons here. So like, let me show you for, if I wanted to center these, I would center and center and notice that they change locations. And let me show you why that's important. Say I have a lot of space here, they're all centered, but if I want them to go to the top, I can make them go to the top. If I want to go to the bottom, I can make them go to the bottom. Same with the left, same with the right, but let's do center, center. And notice I, I drug this to increase the space here. So you can do that with either in the middle of two rows or the middle of two columns, and you can drag like so forth to increase the size. Another little thing is um, if you don't want to try to figure out by manually dragging, you can double click. So notice when it goes from my white cursor to my solid black line, I can then double click and it'll automatically size to fit everything. And same thing if I do that here, boom. And that, that's a pretty cool trick, all right? So um, little shortcuts, hopefully um, you didn't, haven't used these before, now you can kind of practice on your end. And so now that I showed you how to like make it look better, a oh, couple more things, I'm so sorry. So we talked about the paint can, you can also change the colors of the lettering with this option here. So if I wanted to change the color of the lettering, so the colors of the lettering, I could do that here. And notice when I hover over, it actually shows you before you even click it. But I'm going to leave it as black. OK, and then you can also rotate your text with this button here. So if I wanted to rotate that, I can do that there. If I don't like it, I can always undo. And keep it the same. OK, um, if you have a lot of text in one cell and it kind of cuts off. So like, for instance, let me show you. There's some text here and it's cut off. I can wrap it and so then it'll it'll space out your particular cell to make sure you can see everything in there. So I'm going to undo those. I just wanted to show you what the wrap text does. All right. And so now that we've made our sheet look a little bit better using all these different options to format our table, now let's dive into the actual data part. You know, why we would use Excel in the first place. So notice that we have dates, we have locations, we have categories, we have amounts spent. So if I wanted to kind of play around and only look at certain things on this data set, we would want to use something that helps us organize that. We could definitely sort that, um, but we want to use a better tool. And that tool are filters. And filters are amazing. I love filters, and you'll see why in just a minute. So let me show you how to even start a filter. So the first thing is, say you're actually messing around and you're at the bottom of it, you want to make sure you can see your header. So let's scroll back up to the top. And if you're doing this on your own, make sure if you're trying to set a filter, you can see the headers. And then once you see your headers, I would just highlight that entire row like mine. OK, and then once you highlight the row, you want to make sure you're on the home key, the home option, and it's to the far right. You'll see an option that has a Z funnel that says sort and filter. You want to click this option here. And then you want to choose filter. Like a funnel. Once you do that, you'll notice on your headers, they have a little arrow pointing down. OK, and so let's see what that even means. So let's go to our location option. OK, and so our location option, if we were to scroll, you'll see that we spent money at Geico eBay. Remember, this is all made up, so don't judge me if you think this is my budget. <laughs> and so these are the different things that we spent money on. And so if I do the drop down, you'll have a clean list that takes out any duplicates and you'll see every option that you spent your money at. So these are all the options right here. And so with the filters, if I only wanted to see how much money I spent at, let's go to one of the best fast food places. They didn't pay me to say that. Chick-fil-A, if I only wanted to go to Chick-fil-A, I unchecked select all by clicking here. And so it took, all the, it took away the checks. And now I'm going to check Chick-fil-A. So now I'm telling Excel, I only want to see Chick-fil-A. When you do that and click OK, look what the filter does. Isn't that amazing? So now you can then see how many times you went to Chick-fil-A in a year. Again, it's made up, no judging. And how much money you spent each time. So you could tell I definitely made it up because that's a lot of money at a fast food restaurant. But for the sake of training, here are the different times I ate at Chick fil A and how much money I spent. And let me show you some cool little things that Excel does for you that you probably didn't know it did for you. So if I wanted to know how many times I did, I went to Chick fil A, I could literally count each of these one by one, or I can highlight these all. 
And then on the bottom right, you'll see a count. So that means I've went to Chick-fil-A in 2020 10 times. Or before I even did anything, when I did the filter, it tells me how many records I have. So 10 records. So that means I went to Chick-fil-A 10 times. So you have a, a different amount of options to tell you how many times you went to a particular location after you filtered. Quick question. How do I know that I'm filtered? How do I know that there's more data that's not showing? And that is this little icon here. So notice this one is the same filter at the beginning. This one is two, this one is two, but this one has the little funnel. That means something's being done to this. And so that, that lets us know that this is filtered so that I can go back to that button and then I can either select everything or there's an option that says clear filter. So if I choose this, now I'm cleared and I have my whole list again. All right, so let's practice. So if I wanted to see how much I spent just with utilities, I can go to category. Notice that these are all the categories, so I don't, I only want utilities. So I'm going to uncheck everything, choose utilities, hit OK, and then there's my utilities. Yeah, like right, like that would be great if that could happen, right? But this is an example that how you can use filters to quickly see how you've done based on what you want to see. Filters are awesome. All right, and so um, earlier I showed you how to get the count, right? But also notice that if I wanted to see how much money I spent just at JEA, you can highlight all of those. And right here, it's still going to tell you that I, I had to spend 12 times or I spent money 12 times to JEA. But if I wanted to know the total, how do I do that? How do I do that? So in, in our earlier course, you probably remembered how to do a, a formula. If you did good job, you could do an equal sum formula. But Excel is way smarter than um, sometimes we can think of. And so it automatically gives us the count like I showed you earlier, but it also gives us a sum. Are you serious? Thank you, Excel. So now we have the sum right here. And so that's how much we spent at JEA. Pretty amazing. So now let's go ahead and clear that filter again. Clear the filter. And now I've showed you how to do location. I showed you how to do category. What do you think will happen if I did if I filtered on amount spent? So it's going to have a ton of options because what it's doing is it's giving me every instance of a different dollar amount spent. So of course with this, we're going to have a ton of options. So that might not be helpful, but what if I only wanted to see where I spent less than a certain amount or more than a certain amount? So for example, if I wanted to see, you know, let me look at all the places where I spent less than $10. So we can do that filter and the option that will allow us to do that is filter op, filter numbers. And I said that backwards, number filters. So number filters, when we hover over that, nothing will happen, so we have to click it one time. And we can actually filter with all of these options here. So if I only wanted to see all the places where I spent less than $10, I would do less than. So I'm gonna choose less than, and then I'm gonna tell it to do 10.00. I don't really have to do the dollar sign because um, it just recognizes this number. So let's do less than 10.00, hit OK, and look at that. Only the places where I spent less than. So filters, like I said, pretty amazing. It lets you do things very quickly, and then I can then see, OK, based on that, I can do the sum, I can do the count, and I can even average. I didn't even show you that, but they also tell you the average, all right? And again, to clear it, you can go here, but Say I um, wanted to say I did two filters. And I want to clear both of those. So you can do that by clicking here and clearing it and go to the next filter and clearing that. Or you can go where we first started and we put the filter on. But instead of taking the entire filter off, we can actually clear all filters from this one. So if I hit clear here, then we have I'll go back to our data set. All right. So now I've showed you what happens when we filter on this column. I guess I showed you what happens when you filter for these two. They're very similar. Now, what about the date column? Let's see. So if I go to the filter, look at that. So it knows it knows to clump or group all the months together. Amazing, right? So then if I only want to see how much I spent 
in one given month, it already put them all together. So then I can unselect everything and say, all right, well, December, I know I probably spent a lot of money. So let's say it's December, click OK. And now only the December options are shown. Pretty cool, pretty neat. And again, it's because you have them highlighted like that. You get your average date. That was that doesn't really make sense because I highlighted all the dates, but at least it gives you a count. And so then, if I did the money, if I did the money, the amounts spent, then I can then see the average that I spent in that month, how many times I spent in that month, and the total that I spent in that month. Like I said, filters. If you haven't played with filters in Excel, you'll probably want to now, right? Filters are pretty neat. So I'm going to clear those filters again using this button just to show you what it does. All right. And I mentioned it, but I haven't shown you. So of course I'm going to show you is how do you set multiple filters? All right. So for instance, say I wanted to see all my groceries. All right. So I'm going to do groceries here. And then I just want to see well, how many times did I spend more than $100 on groceries? So we already have it on groceries, and now I can go here, do that number filters option, greater than this time, and we want to do $100, so we're just going to put 100.00, hit OK, and there are all the times that I spent over $100 with groceries. Right, and so that's how you utilize the filters. And notice that I did two filters, and on, and you'll know if you did that on yours because you'll see an icon there and an icon there. Right, and then if I if I wanted to do another filter because I noticed I've been to Win Dixie more than once and Sprouts a couple times, I can then filter on those. So say I just wanted to see just Win Dixie, and so I've noticed that I spent last year twice. I spent over $100 at Winn-Dixie and using three filters, OK? And so um, to clear all of these, this is where the clear button up here is very helpful compared to doing it one at a time with these little clears and with this little clear. You can clear all three at one time, go in here and do clear, boom, and they're all clear. All right, so that is the power of filters. Don't you love them? I hope I hope this was helpful for the filters. Now I'm going to show you another tool to kind of group it all together in a pivot table. So um, I'm going to show you what a pivot table is. Once I learned what a pivot table is and what it does, I love them so much. But then again, I love Excel in general, so forgive my nerdiness. So I'm going to show you what a pivot table does. OK, so to do to get started so I can even show you first what it looks like is we're going to click anywhere in our in our data set. So I can click here, I can click here, it doesn't matter where. And then when I'm ready to start my pivot table, I'm going to go to the, the very top and I'm going to click insert. OK, once I click insert, I'm going to have an option that is the very first icon, pivot table right there, pivot table. I'm going to click that. Now, what this is going to ask me is where do I want my pivot table? Well, if this is your first time you've been starting a pivot table, you're probably like, I don't know. Where do I where do you think I should have it? And so this is asking you um, if you want it in a different worksheet or the new worksheet and and so or workbook, but as a different worksheet, because you can actually place it on this white space here, or you can do a new worksheet. And so we definitely want a new worksheet, which is already default. And it's asking us, well, what data are you using? Excel's pretty smart, so it knew to start with A1 and go all the way to D140. So really, when you ever, whenever you start a pivot table, if you're in the data set, more than likely, almost almost 100% of the time, you don't need to change this or this. This tell it to say OK. And now we have our pivot table like blueprint, OK? Now. It looks a little weird, but I got you. I got you. So there are two areas. You have your pivot table builder right here, and then you have all your fields. Excel likes to use a little um, their terminology for certain things, so they call these pivot table fields. But what do you notice? It's just our headers. It's just our headers from our main worksheet. And notice I went back and forth here, and I'm actually going to recommend anytime you do pivot tables, right click on it and rename it. And when you rename it, you just want to rename pivot and hit enter. OK, so I renamed my little worksheet as a pivot 
And you'll see why in just a moment. I, again, so then I can go back to my main sheet, which are my expenses, and then I can go to my pivot table option because now I know it's titled pivot. And so again, this is where I'm going to build it. And these are my fields, which are my headers. So to start a pivot table, you kind of want to know, well, how do I want to distinguish between different things? So if I want to just do a breakdown by my location, I can take this location and notice I can hover over it. It turned into like my little pointer to my crosshairs and I can just drag that to rows. And what it's going to do, it's going to give you an alphabetized list of every place you spent that's located under location here. OK, so it would be the same thing as if you went here and got uh, all these options, but now it put it as a row for you. OK, now what I want to do is for each location, I want to know how much I spent at that location in the year 2020. So then I just go to my amount spent and I'm going to show you what a common error happens whenever we get we we'll start with pivot um, fields. A, if I don't click, hold and drag, I just click it. It's going to then put it in a different spot and it may or may not be right. So notice on here, it probably did the right thing. So we got lucky, but I just want to remind you if you want it to move to where you want, you want to click, hold and drag. Click, hold and drag like I'm doing. OK, now I, also if I click, hold and drag and put it in columns, what it's doing is it's creating a column for every amount spent that is included in this column here. So that's not really helpful because then it's going to let you know when I show you in a second, like how many times I spent $5 at this one. Well, that's probably just a one time shot at one of these places. So this option here is not going to be really useful. What I need to do is I need to take amount spent and I want to undo it. So notice if I want to undo something, I can just uncheck it. And then it takes it away and now I still have my locations here. So then if I want to see the sum, or the amount spent, I want to drag it to values. And look at that. So now notice it does sum of all the amount spent. Look at that. So right now it, it's doing what we want it to do. Yay. But let's clean it up a little bit. So what I can do is I can actually highlight this list here. And now I have these same options that I showed you earlier. OK, one area I didn't really show you are these little options here is because if I'm dealing with money, I want to use the dollar sign symbol. So I'm going to put the dollar sign symbol there. Look at that. And the moment I did that, it also added decimal places to make it look like money. OK, if I wanted to decrease or increase the decimal places, I could do that. But the, when I hit the dollar sign, it changed it to look like currency. Pretty neat, pretty neato. And just like that, look at that. I have a breakdown that Excel did for me without even using filters, even though I love filters. It lets me know how much I spent at every location just like that. So Best Buy, I spent um, 150, Target or Target. I spent almost $700. That's probably accurate. That's probably accurate. That's my, that might be a couple times, not the whole time. I'm just joking. So this is a nice little tool. All right. So let's practice again, but instead of doing location, let's do category. OK, so category. So I'm going to uncheck everything to get this to repeat our steps. So notice this looks like our blank, our blank option that we first started off with. And now let's do category as our rows. Now look at that, all the categories. And now if I want to know how much I spent for each category, we're going to do the amount spent. We're not going to drag it to columns. We're going to drag it to values and look at that. Now it says sum, so that means it's adding it up. It's adding it up and it, it remembered that we had money, so it already kept it as money. And just like that, you are able to see how much you spent for each category. Pretty awesome. So pivot tables is really cool, but wait, there's more. So now I want to go a little bit further with my pivot table and I noticed that um, my my random you know what is random so it says random 576 I need to know a little bit more about that because that's a lot of money that I spent that I don't really have a lot of information so guess what you can do this is the mind-blowing piece right here so if I wanted to know more information on any of these options, I can literally double click on it. And once I double click, it's going to make a new worksheet. Nice and 
format it for us. It does cut it off a little bit. Remember, we can move this over just like that. And look at that. It is now giving us just anything that has a random option with the location, with the date, with how much I spent. And again, it, anytime you're dealing with money, if it doesn't automatically format for you, you can always highlight that, click that money sign, and then it cleans it up for you. But how cool is that? And so if I wanted to, I can actually, because it opened up on a new worksheet, or sometimes some people might call these tabs, you can right click on it, rename it, and then I can call it random. And if I want to go back to my pivot, because we've renamed all these to kind of easily go back and forth, I can go back to pivot and go back to my list. Pretty neat, right? So let's do one more. Let's do, um, let's go to our, let's go to eating out, eating out. What's eating out, right? I know there's fast food, but what, what do you, what's the difference between eating out and fast food? So let's double click eating out, 287. And then on this example, well, we only ate out at Red Lobster a couple times throughout the year. And this is a reminder, you can format this with money by doing the money sign and look just like that. Pretty awesome. And so that is the power of a pivot table. So it does a lot of things that the filters do, but it easily you can easily kind of click and get your own worksheet just on what you wanted. Awesome sauce. All right. And so then if I wanted to take away any options, I can always undo by checking like that and unchecking like that. So now you have the power to take a list of items that you have, and then you can use filters to kind of play around and see what you've done with. You can also then pivot and create a pivot table, and then you can then kind of go from there. All right. So let's do one more pivot table option, and then we are finished with this particular course. So we did category, we did location. Why not do date? So let's do date as your rows, and look at that. They group the months together as well. Awesome, and so now we can do, um, and notice when you did that, it actually broke it down together. And so then if I wanna do the amount spent, I wanna do values, and just like that, I can break it down. If you're curious, you can actually open up each month and it lists every time you bought something um, right there. So if I bought multiple things on a certain day, you can double click that and see that. I think I kept it one per day for our worksheet, but we'll see if I double click this, it's only one time. So we spent Ross, we spent some money at Ross that one time, but pretty nice. And so if you wanted to open or close these, you can click that. And so these pluses means I can expand, these minus means I can go back and put it there. So any any way you want to break it down, either by month, by location, or by category, you have the power of doing it in a pivot table. So I hope this course was helpful. Um, again, this is help you with any list. I just happen to use a budget list for you, but if you had a list of anything you needed and you wanted to break it down by date, by category, by um, the values in that, you can do that with filters and you can do that with pivot tables. So again, thank you so much for taking your time to watch this intermediate training. I hope you got something out of it. I enjoyed my time and until next time, you all have a great day. Thank you.